In today's news, armed robbery inquiry yields drug charges. Fourth Wagner sailing rally commenced earlier today. Beef Island Beach Management Plan detailed garden beds installed at the Leonora Delville Primary School and Joint Marine Shore Base Project making progress. A viewers, these and many more stories after a word from our sponsors. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever right, since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. Wait, really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I post? I watch him bar. I've been watching football. Dark. Nickelodeon. Pop Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome viewers to the Thursday, January 25th, 2024 edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Leading today's news, officers of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force in response to an armed robbery report executed a search warrant on a premise in Virgin Gorda on Friday, January 19th, which led to a drug bust on the sister island. The operation resulted in the arrest of four individuals, Bob George, Bakemba George, Gabriella Vadilas George and a 17-year-old male, all residents of the Valley Virgin Gorda. The individuals were charged with unlawful possession of cannabis with intent to supply following the discovery uh, during the search. Subsequently, they were all granted bail in a sum of $10,000 each and are scheduled to appear at the Magistrate's Court in March 2024. The RVIPF said while the arrests were made in connection with the reported armed robbery, the investigation into the robbery itself is ongoing as officers are actively pursuing all leads to ensure the perpetrators are brought to justice. While the police said in a statement, and I quote, the commitment of the RVIPF to maintaining the safety and security of of the community remains unwavering and updates on the investigation will be provided as they become available." End quote. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force encourages individuals with any information regarding the armed robbery to come forward and assist with the investigation. But confidential tips can be submitted to the Crime Stoppers line at 800-8477. Additionally, those pertinent information can contact uh, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligence Unit at 368-9339. For well, the fourth Wagner sailing rally, an event that honors the legacy of Polish national hero, the late Walter uh, Wagner, who made the BVI his home after settling in Bellamy Key and Trellis Bay between the 1940s and 1950s, commenced earlier today. The Department of Culture revealed that the event, which will run until Sunday, January 28th, will also honor the late Obel Penn in this year's edition. The event uh, kicked off with the opening ceremony at the Trellis Bay uh, Market B uh, Bar and Grill on Beef Island at around 6 p.m. early today. It featured the, re the raising of the Virgin Islands, British and Polish flags in a demonstration of unity and mutually beneficial continued partnership. It also featured the unveiling of L Radak um, Wagner's Remembrance Plaque and the rally welcome concert that 
included various cultural exchanges. Performance was some 250 to 300 Polish sailors from the Polish Yachting Association of North America are expected to travel to the territory to participate in the three-day event. Director of Culture Dr. Catherine Smith emphasized the rally's significance in acknowledging the strong bond between Wagner and Penn, along with the other residents from the East and Long Luck community whose collective efforts significantly contributed to the development of Beef Island and Trellis Bay. She said she was looking forward in particular to the cultural exchanges of music and dance representatives of the Virgin Islands and Polish culture. Our coordinators Ephraim and Shimora Penn uh, expressed their excitement in welcoming participants to the Wagner Sailing Rally in Trellis Bay. Friday's schedule is filled with water-based and recreational sporting activities starting at 11 a.m. and concludes with a highly anticipated full moon party at Trellis Bay. On Saturday, there is a yacht parade where vessels will sail to Yacht Van Dyke followed by the end of rally concert at the popular Fox Seas. Well, in a recent interview with JTV's Kathy Richards, Deputy Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Climate Change, Mervyn Hastings, addressed government's plans for a beach management plan at Beef Island. He said the beach management plan, which is currently accessible to residents online, received public consultation and residents were able to share their feedback. We do know that all the beaches, the main beaches in the Virgin Islands that they were using was, would have been King Garden Bay, that would have been the most popular tourist destination beach in the Virgin Islands. After we had Hurricane Orma and Maria in 2017, the facilities, a lot of the facilities in King Garden Bay were destroyed. So it took them some time to come back. So I do believe back then that they wanted another beach to venture to. Bruceville would have been an option. Long Beef Island would have been another option. I think a decision was made um, to charter people, well, charter is not the word, to cater and allow people to go taxis. To, to, to taxis to go to Long Bay. So obviously it needed a, if anyone knows that there's going to be a lot of people on the beach, anyone's going to want to set up a little facility to accommodate these people. So that's what happened. I do believe in the past, only as far as I can remember, only two vendors were actually given permission. When I say permission, written permission to actually vendor on the beach. Mm -hmm. Over the past six years, from 2017 to today, I was the seven, seven years, I think we have a count of seven vendors on the beach. That's what's happening today. Um, what drove the need for a beach management plan? in the government or in the Virgin Islands was that in 2020 we had what we, what we had it called a beach, a beach policy was passed in, in 2020. And what that dictates is that all beaches in the Virgin Islands have a management plan. He encouraged persons to visit the government's website to get familiar with the plan if they are interested. So people were asking us, why did we start with, 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 with Long Beach Island? We started with Long Beach Island because we saw the need to develop a beach management plan starting there because we see what have happened to King Garden Bay. What and, happened to King Garden Bay? Have you tried to go to King Garden Bay when there's two or three ships in to try to um, get a spot on the beach to sit down if you don't want to reach a, a, a beach chair or you don't want to walk through an umbrella? There's almost zero space on that beach when the ships are in. It is not very accommodating for our overnight tourists. It is not very accommodating for our locals during, during, during the week if they want to go on that beach. We have to understand that the BVI government does not want to stop and facilitate business owners in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. But it's our job to make sure that the beaches in the Virgin Islands are it's comfortable for everyone. Meaning you and your family can go on Beef Island or King Garden Bay. And if you decide you want to put on your own chair, your own towel, that you have the right to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted, that's what we want to do. Well, up next, viewers, more local news. One Stop Auto, located in the r, &R Malone Complex, Pockwood Pond, is having a huge liquidation sale on all inventory, excluding vehicles and genuine Toyota and Lexus parts. Get no less than 50% off all items on shelves and inventory room. Items such as car covers, steering wheel covers, wipers, sealants, chemicals, emergency cones, adhesives, license plates, frames, air filters, oil filters, front brakes, rear brakes, front rotors, rear rotors, radiators, shocks, and much, much more more. A specific listing of all makes and models for which parts are available at liquidation prices will be posted on our Facebook page.
Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. 284 Media proudly presents The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with yours truly, Ron Grant, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it's not all about suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 5. A Tweet for Media Production. Welcome back, viewers. Teachers, students, parents, and community members united on Saturday, January 20th to lend their hands to the installation of innovative Hollywood garden beds at the Leonora Delville Primary School on Tortola. Well, this collaborative effort is part of the Resilient, Sustainable Energy and Marine Biodiversity-funded BVI Smart Schools project in partnership with Green VI. Sarah Penny, Deputy Director at Green VI, shared with 284 Media that the objective of such initiatives is to minimize the environmental impact fostering a greener and healthier territory. The community-driven project exemplifies the collective commitment to sustainability, with locals actively participating participating in making a positive change. District Representative and Junior Minister for Agriculture, Dr. the Honorable Carl Dawson, graced the event and expressed his appreciation for everyone who participated. He emphasized the importance of initiatives like these, focusing on the promotion of gardening as a passion and the broader benefits it brings to the environment. So the initiative that focuses on the school garden at Leonora Delville Primary School is really an initiative led by Green VI and they, you know, call upon in collaboration with the Leonora Delville Primary School Parent Teachers Association. So the persons who were there on Saturday included students from the school as well as parents from the school. And of course, they, they put the call out uh, widely and I responded from the community as well, you know, as district of but it's an initiative that is very dear to me because um, it involves getting young children involved in, in gardening and, and, and getting a passion for gardening. Dr. Dawson also touched on the significance of composting and its potential impact on the wider BVI community. He highlighted how these sustainable practices instill valuable skills and knowledge in the students, creating a foundation for a healthier future. Is also very important to me because it's about um, one enriching the soil um, in order to to get better yield for agriculture, but it also means in terms of diverting um, organic waste from the landfill. So that's another aspect of the project that will take off at some point. So it was a, a great morning. I love working with the children and their parents. They were very enthusiastic, and um, I look forward to continuing to support them um, in, in that work. We have been doing some work as a district committee assisting them around the school and some of the beautification aspects. Um, so we expect to continue to work with the school, its principal, Ms. General Reimer, our teachers, and all the students. Speaking about the broader BBI Smart Schools project, Dr. Dawson underlined its transformative impact on multiple schools across the territory. Yes, this is a part of the, uh, I would say, co-curricular of the school, where these community agencies such as Green VI uh, has reached out, not just at the Leonora Devil School, they've actually been, there are a number of schools in, in the territory, their intention is to be in every, certainly in every public and perhaps every private, private school, where, again, it's about community effort, but also about the, the gardening, getting people interested in that field, and also also understanding um, things like related to, to composting and how we better use, you know, green VIs. I mean, focus, of course, relates to um, recycling and reusing efforts. And this is certainly one where the output of what we used to previously think of waste is now an input into our important agricultural sector. 
while the initiative is fueled by the 1.3 million euros earmarked by the European Union through the Resin Bed program and aims to enhance the safety, health and environmental sustainability of 14 schools in the BVI over two years. The Department of Disaster Management in the media release on Tuesday officially announced the allocation of the funds and emphasized the project's commitment to creating a safer, healthier and greener learning environments. Now moving on viewers, the Recovery and Development Agency has provided an update on construction progress at the Joint Marine Shore Base project site. According to the RDA, concrete pouring has now been completed in the boat rack area. Additionally, exterior grounds were graded and compacted. A great attention to detail was noted in the framework and reinforcement mesh installation before pouring high strength 4000 PSI concrete. What RDA highlighted the continuous efforts and meticulous approach exhibited by the James Todman construction team through each project phase. According to the RDA's website, the project hopes to provide an effective operation base for the Marine Police and Customs and secure storage for up to eight vessels. The expected effect is bolster border control, safety at sea and security for citizens. The British Virgin Islands Ports Authority has confirmed record-breaking cruise passenger arrivals for 2023, stating that the accomplishment not only underscores the strategic importance or significance of the BVI Ports Authority, but also solidifies its position as a key player in the region. In a recent press release, the BVI Ports Authority reported a 110% surge in manifested cruise arrivals in 2023, resulting in approximately 720,392 passengers in 2023, compared to the 343,571 in 2022. While well, it said on a really quote in the release, throughout the year, the BVI Ports Authority witnessed an influx of cruise ships, breaking the previous annual record and highlighting in the territory's increasing prominence as a preferred destination for international cruise liners, end quote. But this also surpasses the previous high of 699,105 arrivals in 2016. Alongside more harbor calls to Tortola, the BVI Ports Authority said it expanded its operations by facilitating increased visits to sister islands, visits to uh, more of the smaller luxury vessels and new lines. But the BVIPA reported a total of 354 uh, cruise calls, with Tartola accounting for 232 of those calls in 2023. Anchorage calls across the territory numbered 122, including 9 at Tartola, 56 at Joss Van Dyke, and 38 at Virgin Garda, and 19 at other locations. Minister for Communication and Works, the Honorable Kai Reimer, said the achievements cements BVI Ports Authority status as a dependable, appealing, port locally and globally. He credited the BVI Ports Authority's efforts and strategic industry relationships. Our Managing Director Akeem Pickering thanked all contributing to the milestone. He also said the record arrivals demonstrate BVI Ports Authority's operational excellence, efficiency and partnerships. Well, in more related news, the premier uh, yacht charter companies, the Moorings and Sunsail, have announced major expansion to their British Virgin Islands operations to kick off 2024. The sister companies, which run the largest chart charter fleet in the BVI recently welcomed 78 new vessels worth $70 million. This includes 19 monohulls, 35 sailing catamarans, and 24 power catamarans. The new arrivals brings the moorings and sun sails combined BVI fleet to 254 yachts, offering more inventory for peak Caribbean sailing season. Alongside fleet growth, the companies have extensively hired new staff to meet rising demand. Their marina workforce now exceeds 300 employees as one of the biggest in the BVI's largest as their employers. Well, Vice President Josie Tucci uh, said they heavily invested in revitalizing the marina and maximizing the guest experience through the new fleet. The aim is to provide an unparalleled charter experience for thousands of annual visitors. Well, up next, more content from across the BVI.
Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more Fire. CCT Fire Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT Fire, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. doing shark research so today we are doing whale research with beyond the reef and wherever I go I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited welcome back viewers and thank you so much for sticking with us the first Caribbean Bacon Awards to be held on Friday, February 16th and Saturday, February 17th in the Virgin Islands will feature some nine different countries from across the region. Organizers of the event, Mrs. Shanda Glasgow, spoke about the representation of culture through the cake submissions. Bakers that will be also showcasing their um their treats, they're not in the competition, but would like to showcase what they do. Beautiful. Yes, and we also would have wine tasting, so you're able to to pair certain wines with what you are um, tasting with the cakes. So right now, the public do have an opportunity to come in and see the whole competition of how everything is put together. And of course, we have. Um, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five judges, okay. where two is a uh, celebrity judge, one is from Canada, and one is from Trinidad, and then we have the other locally um, that are vast in what they're doing in the culinary um, baking. Additionally, she shared the scope of the events. That's where we will have about, we have about uh, nine persons, including the BVI, Lovely. that will be showcasing their talent and skills at the multipurpose. So they're going to be in their six different categories um, that they can choose from and that they're comfortable in because they do have some bakers that are very good in buttercream, but not good in, in, in um, fondant okay. and they're vice versa. Um, so they're a uh, wedding cake, buttercream cake, um, hand painted um novelty um, um hyper realistic and um there's another one i quite don't, oh a celebration okay so each one of those category you have to infuse something from your from your island yes culture in the cake so there'll be a secret ingredient um, infused into the cake. Um, the outside it has to showcase the colors of where they're from. Understood. So if you're from Antigua and Barbuda, you have to show the colors of the flag. And you have to, in case if we haven't been to Antigua, you have to tell me a story about Antigua that makes me want to come to Antigua through your cakes. Understood. So everything is representing the 16th is actually representing where you are from. Okay. So you're showcasing your Caribbean island through your cakes. Beautiful. For persons wishing to attend this event, Glasgow shared ticketing information for both days. So we have the tickets for February 16th, and uh, this here is um, $50. Okay. So this gets you in, and you get to see the show, you get the taste and everything. Um, if you don't get to purchase a ticket, you can pay at the door Understood. for the 16th. Now for the 17th, this is different. So it's a pre-seeded, pre-planned event. So um, you would have to register 
um, your name, persons who you will be coming with. Reason being, we do have a menu set on the website. So you can go on the website, which is www.caribbeanbaconawards.com. And we do know that they have some persons that eat certain things. So we're catering for everyone. Understood. So, for example, you want a table for 10 and you eat something special. So that table, the kitchen will know that this table is for a specific um, meal. So if you come and decide to change your seat, it won't be possible. Understood. So you have to be on the list. So if you come um, on the Saturday, you give your name. There's a, a, a table that will be emailed to you with whom you're sitting with. And then you look for that name at the specific table of where you're sitting. So it's it, it runs very smoothly because of the, the meal that Understood. we have prepared. So you cannot come on the Saturday and to say you want to buy a ticket at the door. Prior. It has to be, yes, right. definitely. And those tickets are? And this one is $180. And that's for the awards. That's for gala. the award. Gala. Beautiful. All the rest for the full interview, visit all 284 media platforms. I'm moving on viewers, Deputy Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Climate Change, Mervyn Hastings said that the vendor, Mr. Sylvan Penn, does not have a permit to operate. The statement came after claims by Mr. Penn stating that he was being forced to move from his current location at the Beef Island Beach by officials. Hastings was at the time speaking to JTV's Kathy Richards in a televised interview. I'll tell you, within the last three or four years, Every single vendor on Beach Island were there illegally. Not one had permission because the two I mentioned on early on, their permission had expired and they were not renewed. So for the last two or three years, no one on Long Beach Island had actually permission from government to operate on that beach. And as of to date? No. Okay. As of two to three years ago. Mm -hmm. We, we came and we started to develop what you call a beach management plan for Beef Island. Mm -hmm. That plan is public to anyone. I hope people um, have seen, because we had several public consultations. We had two public consultations, and we also had two virtual public um, consultations where people could, like we are doing here, people could come in, call in. We showed them the plan. We met in East End twice. We actually met with the Taxi and Levy Commission on the plan. We met with actually the, vendor, the vendors. We sat down with all the vendors together and we showed them the plan. We discussed with them. They, they, they bought into the plan. Well, I want to say bought into the plan. They had the, the opportunity to see the plan and make their options and their views and the concerns to the plan. So this notion of not of, uh, of not being able to know what's going on, that's, that, 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 is, that, that is not true. Mr. Penn was there to almost every single public consultation meeting we had, mm -hmm. and he voiced his opinion when he was in the meetings. You can go back and you can roll the, roll the tape, and you'll see him there asking questions, whether or not he agreed or disagreed with it. He was there, and he was very well aware of the plan. Hastings, while discussing the government's beach management plan, said only two vendors were given written permission in the past to sell at that location. He explained that all the vendors, except for Penn, currently have temporary permission from the government to remain on the beach as the government is going through its beach development plan. He said vendors were asked to sign an agreement with the government for this to happen, but Penn refused. Without the signed document from the government following vendors to or allowing vendors to be on the beach temporarily, Hastings said they would not be able to apply and receive permission to sell food or alcohol at the beach. This plan is some 250 pages long. Anyone want to view that plan can go on our website, uh, bvi.gov.vg forward slash environment, and please download the plan and read it. Of yours, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. 
start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited.